That blowout jobs report, according to the Labor Department, the U.S. economy adding 528,000 jobs in July, double what analysts were expecting. Unemployment rate also dropping to 3.5%. Joining me with analysis, ABC News business reporter Alexis Christophorus and Greg McBride, chief financial analyst at Bankrate.com. Alexis, break down this number for us. Why was this such a big surprise? Double makes headlines. You better believe it does. Uh, I've been calling it a blockbuster report all morning. I've heard others say it's a stunner of a report. However you look at it, it is a pretty healthy report that seems to defy what's happening in the overall economy. I mean, we now have the unemployment rate at a half century low. We're back to where we were pre-pandemic, having gained back just about all the jobs we lost during the pandemic. So it's a surprise to see that despite the fact that we had back-to-back -back quarters of a contracting economy, despite the fact that we keep debating whether or not we're in a recession, and despite the fact that consumer spending is shifting away from goods and more to services, companies are hiring at a near historic rate. And it's not just the hiring. We also saw wages rise. The, the pace of those uh, that jump in wages you know, coming down a little bit, but still very solid. Wages up 5.2% year over year. So, so this report showing a very tight and a very strong labor market at a time when the Fed is raising interest rates to, to bring down inflation. So it shows that those four interest rate hikes by the Fed so far doing little, if anything, uh, to sort of rein in this tight job market. Yeah, at least not uh, moving the needle yet on the jobs, as you put it, Alexis. Greg, bringing you in on this point here and what Alexis just mentioned with wages, it seems like the U.S. has an inflation problem, not a jobs problem. So what does that mean for the Fed? Well, there's, this really throws cold water on the whole idea that the Fed is going to be uh, pivoting to a, an easier stance, that they're going to stop raising rates and maybe move to, to cutting as early as next year. That narrative was out there floating around the last couple of weeks. It pushed markets higher. And this just really throws cold water on that. The Fed themselves continues to be very... Uh, forceful about the fact that they're going to fight inflation and this blockbuster blowout jobs report to, to use the terms that I think you know you, you you've used and I think are entirely appropriate this gives them the green light to continue to press higher with interest rates and Greg of course remind us what higher rates mean for Americans who want to borrow money or need to borrow money well, the higher rates mean higher borrowing costs, and that's part of the design is that those higher rates and higher borrowing costs will work to bring down demand and, and slow the economy. But for consumers, where you're really feeling this, credit card rates and home equity lines of credit, both are up sharply. They're going to continue to rise at a pretty heavy pace, uh, particularly with the Fed uh, maintaining uh, an aggressive stance on raising interest rates. Yeah, Greg, I know that national average for credit card rates is somewhere around 17 percent, and to your point, going higher from here. Alexis, you mentioned wages rising, but still less than inflation. So in the context of the Fed's next move, what do you think? Well, the, the, of course, the Fed looks at this overall report, uh, but they really hone in on that wage number. And while it is down a little bit, you know, wages were up about 5.6% a few months ago, now up 5.2% year over year. That is still really solid growth. What that tells us is companies are continuing to, um, you know, compete for a small pool of workers. So they need to continually raise wages to attract new talent. And that is inflationary because what we've been seeing is companies, in order to pay for those higher wages, have to raise prices for their goods and services, which is sort of this vicious cycle, if you will, uh, of inflation. So the Fed has wanted the job market to cool off a little bit. Ironically, the Fed wants to see companies start to lay off some workers and perhaps wages to not rise as quickly as they have been in order to give prices sort of a break and just sort of fall back down to earth, if you will. That's not happening. We have three more Fed meetings between now and the end of the year. And after today's report, uh, most are betting that the Fed is going to have to get pretty aggressive. We could be in for another three quarters of a percentage point jump in rates at the September meeting and perhaps more to come in November and December. So, Greg, picking up on Alexis's point there about this kind of vicious circle, if you like, I mean, we have to say inflation, which the Fed has made it very clear, is its number one issue right now. Will the Fed be able to pull off this so-called soft landing? I, I'm very skeptical of that, uh, and the you know reason is when they raise interest rates, it takes six to nine months for that to fully cycle through the economy. They've raised interest rates a lot in the last four months. 
but it's been four months, right? And so we were not yet seeing the impact on the labor market, for example. The economy is slowing, but the labor market remains a pillar of strength in the economy. So getting it right uh, is that timing right is extremely difficult. Even the best hitters in baseball fail seventy percent of the time, and I think that that's sort of what the Fed is up against in terms of trying to engineer this soft landing. You even hear them talking more and more about how there could be some turbulence, that there could be bumpy, that uh, you know we could have a, a recession. And I think that just speaks to the reality. Yeah, and I think the Fed in general has pulled off a soft landing once since 1990. So the stat's not exactly with that institution. Greg, Alexis, thank you so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.